Good morning. This is the service for August 4th, 2024, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. We're going to use Divine Service Setting 5, but we're going to start with hymn 918, Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. Guide me. Guide me, O thou great Redeemer, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Feed me till I want no more. Open now the crystal fountain whence the healing stream doth flow. Let the fiery cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliverer, strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and shield. Be thou still my strength and shield. When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fear subside. Death of death and hell's destruction, lead me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever give to thee, I will ever give to thee. We're going to continue on page 213. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 145, verses 10 through 21. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power. To make known to the children of men your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works. The Lord upholds all who are falling, and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and kind in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We sing the Kyrie on page 944. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe Praise is going to be hymn 816 from all that dwell below the skies. From all that dwell below the skies, let the Creator's praise arise. Alleluia, alleluia, let the Redeemer's name be sung. Through every land, by every tongue. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Eternal are thy mercies, Lord. Eternal truth attends thy word. Alleluia. Alleluia, thy praise shall round from shore to shore, till sun shall rise and set no more. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. All praise to God the Father be, all praise, eternal Son, to Thee. Alleluia, alleluia, whom with the Spirit we adore for ever and forevermore. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Holy God, or the Collect, that's where we are. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son Jesus as the heavenly bread of life. Grant us faith to feast on him in your word and sacraments, that we may be nourished unto life everlasting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, is from Exodus chapter 16. The whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread in the full. For you have brought us into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven to you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. 
So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people heard of, of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was, and Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 4. It is the basis of our sermon. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, When he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower depths of the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing our hymn of the day, hymn 662, Onward Christian Soldiers. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ the royal master leads against the foe. Forward into battle, see his banners go. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Like a mighty army moves the church of God. Brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod. We are not divided, all one body we. 
one in hope and doctrine, one in charity. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Crowns and thrones may perish, kingdoms rise and wane, but the Church of Jesus constant will remain. Gates of hell can never against that church prevail. We have Christ's own promise, and that cannot fail. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Onward then, ye faithful, join our happy throng. Blend with ours your voices in the triumph song. Glory, laud, and honor unto Christ the King. This through countless ages men and angels sing. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. We're going to read the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life which the Son of Man will give to you, for on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, And what sign do you do, that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives his life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We're going to sing our creed with hymn 953, We All Believe in One True God. We all believe in one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, ever present help in need, praised by all the heavenly host. All he made his love in folds, all creation he upholds. We all believe in Jesus Christ, 
Son of God and Mary, Son, who descended from his throne and for us salvation won. By whose cross and death are we rescued from all misery? We all confess the Holy Ghost who from both in truth proceeds, who sustains and comforts us in all trials, fears, and needs. Blessed Holy Trinity, praise forever be to Thee. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Watch a young children's soccer game. They all go running for the ball, except maybe the goalies. Now, the goalies may be paying attention. I know my daughter, when she was in goal, would be looking at flowers or talking to her friends. It's a disorganized mass out there. They don't really know what they're doing. They're all trying to play soccer. They're all trying their best to do well. There's a oneness about it. They're probably in competition with each other, but not in the same sense as adults. They all just want to kick and run. They want to be friends and chat, just like my daughter was chatting with the other people on the field instead of concentrating on the game. They really don't know how to be soccer players. So they watch older soccer players. They watch Olympic teams and high school teams and they go to coaches and they learn what it means to be a soccer player. Well, or we could go with baseball, right? You start out with t-ball. Start out with the little kids out there running the wrong way up the wrong line or stopping before they get to the base or seeing the ball and having it hit them in the face, seeing the ball and having it drop on the ground trying to get the ground ball and having it run up and hit them and woo. all those things that happen with children as the adults are trying to get around, get around, keep running, keep running. And then as you get older, you get a little bit better. Maybe you start playing, you know, parent pitch or softball. And eventually, if you get good enough, you get on a baseball team or you get on a fast pitch woman's softball team. Did you learn how to play the game? Did you watch the professionals play and you're amazed at their skill and their talents? Did you model yourself after them? Did you hit your coach or your dad or your brother? Did you lift up your elbow? In my case, you're left-handed and you learned to bat right-handed because your dad and your brother were right-handed. That's how they did it. That's, that's just the way you bat, right-handed. And I do catch with my right hand and throw with my left. But you learn and you grow and you come to understand what it means to be a baseball player, a softball player, a soccer player, a tennis player. You come to understand what it means to be a farmer, a teacher, a doctor. There's a right way to do things, and you learn it from those who have come before by looking at them, by modeling yourself after them. You learn it by the instruction of teachers, and in the process, you unify into a better way of doing things, a way that is right. If I had the hitting ability of the splendid splinter, Ted Williams, I would be doing it as was right. I would be hitting as well as anyone has ever hit. Well, God has given us faith. And we start out like little children, kind of blundering about in our faith, very eager, very excited, very capable of being friends with others and enjoying the group that we're in and being a part of the community, a great benefit, in fact, to the community. 
Those little kids' soccer games are good way places for people to gather together to grow, and much good comes can, I should say can, come of them. And so we as Christians kind of start out the same way. We're eager, we're full of energy, we're full of zeal and fervor. But maybe we don't know all the ways to execute what we're doing as best we can. So we look to models. Models like a pastor, right? It's one of my jobs is to model living in the faith. Models like your teachers and your Sunday school teachers and Christians who have been in the church for a greater period of time, the, the women of the, of the auxiliaries, the men who are elders and trustees. And you learn about God through them, and about the faith in God through them, and you come to trust in God and to figure out how to react to persecution, how to react to troubles and problems, how to react to someone challenging your faith with science, challenging your faith with false morality, challenging your faith with death. We grow as we look to other Christians, as we look to the revealed word of God, as we receive Christ in these ways. Now our greatest example is Jesus Christ. Not only does he give to us our faith, does he make us alive and free of sin and free of guilt? Does he promise to us what is coming, eternal life, and make us children of God? But he's an example. When he was being persecuted, how did he react? When he was being challenged by the Pharisees with trick questions, how did he respond? When his friends and those who said they followed him turned against him, what did he do? Through it all, we see Jesus maintain love. We see Jesus maintain his relationship with the Father. We see Jesus concerned with those around him, having compassion, being a shepherd. And in the process, we learn not only is he our Lord and going to do those things for us, but we who are one with the body of Christ should act in the same way. When we see someone hurting, we should have compassion and do what we can to help them. When someone betrays us, we should forgive them, and try to draw them back in to being part of God's family. When we need help, we should pray to the Heavenly Father for strength and for guidance, and to give us people around us who can help us. See, the body of Christ is one. It's one unity in Christ. And because of that, the only way to be one is to do the things of God. If you're on a soccer team and you're following your own design, not the coach's design, or let's do basketball because I know it a lot better. If you're on a basketball team and all of you are filling the same lane, not doing what the coach taught, this is your lane, this is your lane, this is your lane, fast break, three on one, right? Point guard comes up the middle, other two get on the wings, crash in, person comes up to stop the guard, lay up. However, if you're all in the middle, coming up together, if all of you want the ball, that one person can stop and break up the whole play. So if we're going to be unified, one in Christ, if we're going to work as God's people according to his design to grow his kingdom, to help those in need, we need to follow the design God has given. And you can't follow the design God has given if you don't know it. You can't know that coveting is a sin, as Paul tells us, until you come to the word and see coveting is a sin. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, nor his wife, nor his maidservant, nor his manservant, nor his cattle, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Because that leads to all these other sins. It leads to not trusting in God, that God will provide. 
that leads to not having faith that you have right now what God has given you, what God will use to produce his plan. And so we need to learn. And we learn by coming to his word and by studying others. Same way we learn how to hit. By getting instruction and by watching those wonderful players of baseball that at least I loved as a youth and still love. Christ has made us one, but he's made us as one for a purpose. And when you're one with Christ, you have a purpose. It's, it's just a natural thing to being a Christian. Just like a natural thing to being a mother is to cherish your child, a natural thing to being a Christian is to love your neighbor. And if you really want to love your neighbor, you have to learn how to do it. And that means delving into what God gives you to learn. And that means associating with other Christians so from them you can learn. And then we grow in unity as one body of Christ. And God uses us to execute his plan. To bring together his people forever. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to continue with the prayer of the church on page 215. Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend all who are in need, praying for them at all times, thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and we join in your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We're going to close with hymn 924. Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. One more page. Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. Fill our hearts with joy and peace. 
Let us each your love possessing triumph in redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this wilderness. Thanks we give and adoration for your gospel's joyful sound. May the fruits of your salvation in our hearts and lives abound. Ever faithful, ever faithful, to your truth may we be found. Savior, when your love shall call us from our struggling pilgrim way, let not fear of death appall us, glad your summons to obey. May we ever, may we ever reign with you in endless day. Go in the Lord's peace. Amen.